The nucleus is the core of the atom. However, the size of the atom is not defined by the size of the nucleus. It's defined by the region in space occupied by the electrons around it. So what is the location of these electrons? Where are they? Well, in most pictorial illustrations of the atom, you find the electrons swirl around in circles or orbits. But is this really a good illustration or a good depiction of the actual situation? Is the orbit really circular? And where is it located? Is it located in one of these orbits or maybe this one? Now, as it turns out, none of these illustrations are particularly accurate. We need to find a better description for the electron orbit. And in order to do that, we have to look at those locations in space where the electron is allowed to go. So let us try to define an electron function that describes the presence of the electron in the vicinity of the nucleus. Let us simplify things. Let us assume that the nucleus is the core of the atom and that the atom is one-dimensional, so only one coordinate is important. The size of the atom then is defined by two firm boundaries on this coordinate. If you set these very, very firm boundaries, we can say that the electron can be found anywhere within these boundaries and there's nowhere to be found outside of these boundaries. And then we ask ourselves, what function would describe the presence of an electron in this case? We also require this function to be smooth and continuous. Now here is a solution. This function is smooth and continuous and disappears at the edges. It is not defined outside of the boundary. This is a good description of the electron. It looks like half of a wave or one half wavelength. Now the next solution looks like this. It also looks like a wave. It looks like two half wavelengths. This function too is zero at the edges as required and is smooth and continuous. The next allowed solution also looks like a wave. In this case, I find three half wavelengths and so forth. We can go on and on. So we can con conclude at this particular point that the allowed solutions of the electron function look like a standing wave. We can call these functions, therefore, wave functions. And we will describe these wave functions by the Greek letter psi. We'll also indicate this psi with a label, the index n. And this n is an integer. It runs from 1 to infinity. In fact, it labels, in this case, the number of half wavelengths of the allowed function. Now, this description is a little bit too restricted because we set very hard boundaries for the size of the electron, of the, of the atom. In reality, the electrons can go farther away from the nucleus than these harsh boundaries. However, the electron cannot go too far. It is very unlikely to be found very far away from the nucleus. If we take this into consideration, we find functions that look a little different than the functions here. Let's have a look at one of them. Here is one. It's now plotted as a function of r, where r is the distance away from the nucleus. The origin here is the nuclear position. This function here disappears far away from the nucleus. So it turns to zero for larger r. This is an allowed solution. We call this n equals one. The next allowed solution looks very similar. However, it has an extra swing, like the swing of a wave. This is n equals two, the next allowed solution. Subsequently, n equals three, very similar, yet it has an extra swing. And so forth, n equals four, n equals five, up to infinity. Again, we see this label n. n is very important. You'll call this n, this label n, the quantum number. The quantum number labels the allowed solutions of the electron function, the allowed solutions of the wave function. Now, this description is still not accurate because we have assumed that the wave function is a one-dimensional function. And in reality, the electron is a three-dimensional object. So far, we have considered only the properties of the electron function along the coordinate r. 
which is the coordinate away from the nucleus, or the so-called radial coordinate. But for each distance r, there are two more coordinates. We need to take those coordinates into consideration as well. For each distance r, there's actually a spherical surface, s. And we can ask ourselves the question, what is the property of the electron function on this surface s? The surface s is defined by two coordinates. And it turns out that in these two coordinates, the electron also has wave behavior. This means that also in these coordinates, we need a quantum number to label the solution of the wave function. That means we need two more quantum numbers in addition to the quantum number n. The total wave function, therefore, psi, has now three quantum numbers. The first one is n. It labels the solution of the wave function along the radial coordinate. The other two, l and ml, label the solutions of the wave function in the dimension of the spherical surface s. So we need two more quantum numbers. That makes a total of three. We need three quantum numbers to fully describe the allowed solutions of the wave function. We can conclude, therefore, that the wave function, or the orbital, as it is sometimes called, needs three quantum numbers to be fully described. So let's summarize this. We have seen that the electron function behaves like a standing wave, and therefore is called a wave function. And we have seen that there are allowed solutions of these wave functions. These allowed solutions are labeled with a quantum number. Because the atom is a three-dimensional object, we need three quantum numbers to fully describe the wave function, wave function in three dimensions.